Hey guys, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Call number 34, chapter 23, Gauss law. In figure a small circular hole, this is the figure, of radius 1.8 centimeter has been cut in the middle of an infinite flat non-conducting surface that has a uniform charge density sigma equal to 4.50 pico coulomb per meter square. Uh, as the axis with its origin at the whole center is perpendicular to the surface. In unit vector notation, what is the electric field at a point P at z equal to 2.56 centimeters? So, we have an infinite uh, sheet, charged sheet, positively charged sheet with a uniform surface charge density given here, written here 4.5 picocoulomb per meter square. And uh, there is this hole, uh, hole is carved out of this sheet, circular hole. And from the center of the circular hole perpendicular to the sheet, we have this z axis. On z axis at point P at some distance z from the center, that is given z 2.56 centimeters, we had find out uh, field due to this charge sheet without this portion. So, we have a complete charge sheet with uh, this part lagging. Well, had it been a complete sheet, we know field would be sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. Okay, had it been a complete sheet. But this is not a complete charge sheet. We have a portion of it, a circular portion of it of radius r, which does not have any charge. Okay, which does not have any charge. So, what we will do is, uh, very simple, we'll use the uh, superposition principle that net field is vector sum of individual fields. So, what we'll do is, we'll fill this gap, we'll fill this uh, area here with the same positive charge of the same density sigma, okay? So, that it becomes a completely positively charged sheet, okay? Complete positively charged sheet. So, this is it. I'm considering uh, this whole, I'm uh, that's what I am considering there to be positive charge. This disk, this area, circular area, I'm putting some positive charge of the same density as the other parts of the sheet. So, then it becomes a complete sheet. When it becomes a complete sheet, I know the field. But that's not what we are asked to find out. We are asked to find out field without this part. Field due to this sheet without this part. What I am finding here is field, field due to a completely charged sheet. Okay, there is no gap, there is no gap. Now, what we will do is, since there is no charge in this part, in this part, what I will do is, I will put exactly the same amount of negative charge in this disk, with the same surface charge density sigma, whatever it is. If I put the same negative charge in this circular area, then positive and negative balance each other, this part becomes again neutral. And that's what is given. So that's what is given. This part is neutral. This part does not have any charge. So what I'm doing here is I'm first putting positive charge there in this circular area so that it becomes a completely positively charged sheet and we can find out field due to that uh, sheet. Then I'll, in the same circular area, I'll put the same negative charge, whatever positive charge is there, I'll put the same negative charge, same charge density so that it becomes neutral. Then what I'll do is, due to that negative charge, I'll separately find out field at point P. Okay, separately find out field at point. That's what I'll do on this page. I'll consider just the negative charge in this circular area, and just with this negative charge circular, it becomes a circular negatively charged circular disk. I'll find out field at this point P. So first, I'm finding out field due to a completely charged sheet at point P. Okay, complete by assuming positive charge in the circular area. Then I am finding out uh, field at point P due to the negatively charged circular area. Just the negative charge, not this positive charge sheet, just because of this negatively charged sheet. Then I will combine the two. When I combine the two, positive and negative balances out, so we get this neutral area again. We get this area as chargeless area. Then the net field will be only because of the sheet, because this part is having zero charge. So, first we'll find out field due to this complete sheet. Then we'll find out field due to the negatively charged circular area. Then we'll find out field due to the combination. And in the combination, this circular part becomes neutral again. Positive and negative neutralizes. So, we again have the same thing whatever was given to us. Is that fine? Okay. So, let's move on. Uh, now, this 
is a completely positively charged sheet and we know magnitude of the field due to an infinite charged sheet is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. We have used it many a times in previous sessions also. So sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. For a positively charged sheet, this field is normally outward. For a negatively charged sheet, this field is normally inward. That is to say, for a positively charged sheet, field is away from the positive charge. And uh, uh, for a negatively charged sheet, field is towards the sheet. Now, this time we have a positively charged sheet. So this field is outward, along the outward normal. So I'll uh, draw that. This is field due to the complete sheet. I'll call this E1. Okay, I'll call this E1. So you can clearly see it's in the positive direction of z-axis. Okay, it is in the positive direction of z-axis. So if I write this field in unit vector notation, I'll write E1 vector is equal to magnitude is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. Then direction is positive direction of z-axis. Okay, positive direction of z-axis. For that, I'll use uh, unit vector k. If you are using the con convention of z unit vector, you can also represent it by z unit vector, whatever you are using, okay, you continue with that. I'm used of k unit vector, so I'm using k unit vector. So this is field due to a completely charged sheet. Oh, I missed it. This is field due to a completely positively charged sheet, okay. So let's call this our equation 1. Now I'll find out field at the same point P due to the negatively charged circular disk here. Forget about this positive charge, okay? Forget about this positive. Just consider the negatively charged disk here of radius R. Field at point P due to this negatively charged disk. Now here I'll use a result which we have done in chapter 23, problem number 34, okay? I'll write it here. Chapter 23 problem problem number 34 yes problem number 34 you can check out the playlist of chapter 23 and you'll find out problem number 34 there there we have derived this result i'll directly use the result uh, field due to uh, due to a charged disk on its axis field due to a uniformly charged disk on its axis is given by E is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, 1 minus z divided by under root of r square plus z square. It may look crazy, but this is it. Okay. This one we have derived in problem number 34 from chapter 23, not this chapter. Okay. No, no I'm sorry, chapter 22. Chapter, this is chapter 23 from chapter 22. From chapter 22, problem number 34, we have derived this result there, so you can check it out. I'll also give the link in the description. So, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, 1 minus z divided by uh, under root of r square plus z square. z is distance from the center of the disk, r is radius of the disk, sigma is again the charge density, magnitude of the charge density. Again, if it is positively charged disk, then field is along the axis away from the disk. If it's negatively charged disk, then field is towards the disk along the axis. This time we're having negatively charged disk, okay? We're having negatively charged disk. So field is towards the disk along the axis. This is E2. I'll call this E2. So clearly E2 is in the negative direction of Z axis. So let me write this result in unit vector notation now. So therefore, E2 is equal to magnitude is this sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, 1 minus z divided by under root of r square plus z square. And then direction is along negative direction of z axis, so I'll put a negative unit k unit vector. Okay, negative unit uh, k unit vector. This is field at point P due to the negatively charged disk. So we found field due to a positively charged sheet at point P, that is a sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 k amama k unit vector. And then uh, at the, due to the negatively charged disk, uh, field is minus sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, 1 minus z divided by under root of r square plus z square k unit vector. Then the combination of the two. Remember when we consider combination of the two, the middle portion again becomes neutral. 
because positive and negative will uh, uh, balance each other. This circular area again becomes neutral. That is exactly what was given to us. We had a positively charged sheet with this gap there, with the circular gap there. So we are neutralizing that part. So the field will be now the superposition of the two. The net field will be field due to the charged sheet uh, plus field due to this negatively charged disk. So that's what I'll write here. So field, total field now is equal to E1 plus E2. E1 is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 k unit vector plus E2 is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 minus time is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0. So I'll write it this way plus minus time is sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 1 minus z square divided by under root of r square plus z square power k unit vector. Okay, let me check it out. Minus sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0 1 minus z divided by uh, under root of r square plus fine. So, uh, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, I will take common, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, we have k unit vector, again I will take common, so k unit vector is outside, we have 1 remaining here, then we have this minus 1, minus minus is plus z square divided by under root of r square plus z square, okay, so this implies net field at point P is equal to plus 1 minus 1 goes to dogs. So we have sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, z square divided by under root of sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, z square divided by under root of r square plus z square k unit vector. So net field is along positive direction of z axis. So now we substitute the values. We already know the values. Sigma is given to us. R is 1.8 centimeters, sigma is 4.50 pico coulomb per meter square, pico is 10 to the power minus 12, uh, z is 2.56 centimeters. Again, we'll uh, use SI system, so we'll convert everything in SI system. So field E is equal to sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, sigma divided by 2 epsilon 0, sigma is 4.50. 4.50 pico coulomb, so pico is 10 to the power minus 12, so it becomes coulomb per meter square. So this is an SI system divided by 2 epsilon 0, so 2 into epsilon is 8.85 into 10 to the power minus 12 in SI system. Then we have z, z is 2.56 centimeters, so 2.56 into 10 to the power minus 2 meters. Okay, then under root of r square, r value of r is 1.8 centimeters, so 1.8 into 10 to the power minus 2 square minus z square, z is 2.56 centimeters, so into 10 to the power minus 2 square. So this is uh, what we have to work out and we also have uh, unit vector k. So this is what we have worked out. I have already uh, done that. Okay, I have already done that. This comes out to be 0 0.208. So E is equal to 0 0.208 k unit vector, or I can write it as uh, 0 0.208 newton per coulomb into k unit vector. So direction is in the positive direction of z-axis, okay, in the positive direction of z-axis. Fine, that will do for this session.